And so my name means eternal flame, perpetual light, mm -hmm. continuous enlightenment. Wow. We are back with another impactful powder keg Morris Mud Show. Y'all already know the brother Saba G from the last interview. He's really making some segue, breaking things down, bridging the gap, as we would say, brother. You know what I'm saying? Now, we have a new guest. His brother, another brother. We got double the elder. This LL. No cool J. I'll be the cool. This LL. <laughs> going on here at the Morris Mud Show today. I want to welcome Brother Payam. That name alone, <laughs> we were discussing. Can you please just give us a breakdown on your name and the, the, well, say, say what you say. Bring, bring, bring it back. <laughs> please, please. Well, it was, it's an interesting concept. Like, mm -hmm. uh, my brother, as you know, and you've been talking earlier in the show, is a poet. Yes. And he, he was doing his thing. And at the same time, I was acting with Ron Milner, one of the prominent playwrights from Detroit. Mm -hmm. And my brother just looked at me and said one day, you know, you, I'm doing poetry and you acting, we ought to do something together. So I said, that's a good idea. So he said, but you got to have a stage name. <laughs> so, I mean, I thought about it, but then I went. And one day I was meditating on some Zen, and uh, I was contemplating what a Zen master would say to bring a student to a awareness, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, what is the sound of one hand clapping is the, one of the more popular ones. Mm -hmm. And so I began to think, I said, if I was a Zen master, what would I say? Then I said, it's the concept of a pie man. The, the, the pie symbol in mm -hmm. math, you know. It's a never-ending string of numbers. I said, this is perfect. I said, it's, it's three followed by ever-changing but never-ending. Mm. Three stands for the three aspects, your mind, your body, and your spirit. Mm. And then the numbers are ever-changing but never-ending. That's my concept on life. It, mm. It's always changing, but it never mm. ends. <laughs> so I said, wow, I took that. But then the second part, I took that pie, mm -hmm. but then the second part, I went into my, my fire sign. I'm an Aries. So I had written a poem to a, a young lady in the theater group, and she was an air sign, and I guess we were having turbulence. And okay. I said, this air, fire needs air <laughs> to survive. But I mean, if it's a hurricane, you might burn down a forest. And it was, so, so I went through all these changes with her. And at the end of the poem, I said, now you're sleepy. You've calmed your air and I've reduced my flame to an ember and contemplating my need for you. Mm. So I said, ember. I said, well, phonetically, it's, uh, it's a little rough. So I made it emba. Mm -hmm. to be African phonetically correct. And mm -hmm. I put the pie in front of it. And so my name means eternal flame, perpetual light, mm -hmm. continuous enlightenment. Wow. The eternal flame is for my energy. The perpetual light is what I give to my students. They're look, you know, I'm constantly providing that light. And then continuous enlightenment I'm learning every day. Mm. You know, every every moment is a learning experience. Mm. So and and then uh, fully it's Paimba Mwali Mu. But why why Mwali Mu is just key Swahili for a teacher. Okay. Because I've been teaching these kids, like I say, I have a youth organization called the House of Pi. Okay. And I teach kids to do minor electrical repair in the home and then they go out. And, and, and fix things in your house. Mm -hmm. So wow. people ask me, they say, wow, how many uh, master electricians you got now? I said, but never my intent to make master electricians. I still only have one mm. who became a master electrician. And how many years? years? In 50 years. Wow. And, and I said, my intent was to show them that if they could master electricity, they could do anything they want. And so they have, they have. They got the confidence to say, man, 
electricity and it's that simple. Wow. I can do anything. And so some of my students include uh, Farid Zarif, Dr. Farid Zarif. He, I, I took him on as a student at about 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. he, he was so endowed in the martial arts, he became Stevie Wonder's private bodyguard, left Detroit as his private bodyguard, <laughs> went to New York. His, his story is interesting all at once because he was valedictorian of his high school. Wow. When he graduated, everybody knows the valedictorian goes to college. Right. He said to me, I don't want to go to college. And I said, fear not. College is not for everybody. I said, but if you don't, you must do what you love to do. Hmm. And he said, I only love martial arts. Wow. <laughs> so I, I said, well, then teach it. So he started teaching. He started the Ninja Karate and Health Club. And then as things were evolving, he felt pretty good. Stevie, the entertainers come to town, they need security. Right. But they don't bring their whole security cadre. They just bring a skeleton crew and then augment it with the existing talent. Mm. So he came, Steve One came to Detroit and said, well, who's the best martial artist? And the response was Zari. Wow. He said, well, okay, I'll add you to my cadre. But then as he went along, he came back and said, Oh, this guy is really spiritual. Wow. <laughs> so he says, I want you to be my personal bodyguard. Oh, wow. So Zarif came back to me and said, Steve wants me to be his personal bodyguard. He says, what do you think? I said, well, I think when you go to California, the enemy will be different. There mm. won't be five guys coming to beat you up. It's going to be soft. It's going to be seductive. Mm -hmm. It's going to be glitter. Yep. Can you handle that <laughs> enemy? <laughs> Can no, did I said, can you handle that enemy? And he said, I think I can. Mm -hmm. I said, well, then you have my blessing. And he went on to become Steve's bodyguard for maybe three or four years. Wow. And called me one day and just said, I ain't supposed to be riding nobody's body. <laughs> and from then, he, he, he knocked the guy <laughs> out. He knocked the guy out. He was describing it to me. And he said, mm -hmm. I saw suddenly time stopped. Mm. I hit him, you know, I hit him in the nose and broke his nose. His nose went into his face. He said, things slowed down. I could see his eyes swell up. Mm -hmm. I could see his face and his eyes closed and, they were, and he fell. And I said, why am I doing this? I know enough about the human body that I can heal it rather than to hurt kill it. it. Yeah. So then he went to college. Mm. And he became an MD bariatrics and he's a PhD naturopath. So there's so many stories like that existing. One of my students, she came to me and said, do you think I could be a lawyer? She was about 14. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, you argue with me enough and your arguments, <laughs> your arguments are pretty good. So she became a criminal justice lawyer. This is Tracy Green. And after 22 years in the uh, juvenile justice system, she mm -hmm. ran for judge, and now she's a judge wow. in the system. Uh, why? If I could just interject, that was what I said to you again. I was at a gathering of my peers, right? And one of them was a retired judge, right? And so this is what uh, this is so powerful mm -hmm. about what we're talking about. Our generation has to influence bring out the best Correct. of us so that we can and not sit back and say I'm a retired judge and now I'm too old. I'm or, done, right. Or even I'm on the bench now. But yeah, but how do we flow in mm. the system? Yeah, and I, and I realize that because like you're saying in the terms of age, it doesn't matter. You still have that knowledge. Right. And then there's a saying uh, uh, you can't take it with you. People, they're talking about basically about money, but that goes double for knowledge. So my thing is to give it up. When my class is actually free, the students come and they learn. And, and, and the thing is when that, that, that seed hits them and I understand though, they go out and do whatever they are. I had a student, uh, Wanda Wiley, she became, uh, uh, she was in the, on the cadre for President Clinton. She worked out of the White House. She was mm -hmm. in the military. And uh, I was also a union official. She used to set up the sound systems with President Clinton. She went to Turkey, Russia with him and everything. Mm -hmm. And so one day she happened to be in the White House 
while I happened to be lobbying from my union position, CWA, wow. and uh, I was the only black uh, uh, president. Mm -hmm. So we're standing, the, uh, after we lobbied, all the presidents got together and said, well, let's go to the White House. And so you have to get an invitation. You got to do a little thing. You stand out, line up around the White House, and you're waiting. So we're all standing and lined up around the White House waiting to get in. And she came out. She held up her hand. And I took all my constituents out of the line, walked straight into the White House, and everybody looked you know somebody in the White House? Wow. I said, yeah, is that unusual? <laughs> I know people. <laughs> right, right. And so, and, and so, so Wanda took us on a private tour of wow. the White House. Wow. <laughs> see, this comes back, yeah. I mean, to what I said uh, before we got on, that mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been in Detroit. Pi has been in Detroit. You've been in Detroit. And now connecting these energies. Right. Of, of the power of Detroit, you you have uh, you're going to connect me to the whole rap movement of Detroit. Mm -hmm. But then being connected with Pi, you got another dimension of, right. of Detroit. He, he he wasn't one of his students, but the you know you uh, a, a mentee. I don't know exactly what your relation is with the former city chief of city council. Oh, the president of the city. Right. Oh, Brenda Jones was uh, in my union, CWA. Gotcha. Well, I was president or vice president at the time. She was a steward. And so she came to me and said uh, she wanted, she had political aspirations. I said, well, you ain't going to get no, no movement here in our local, which was 4100. So she transferred to another local and took over that local. Mm. She became president of that local. Wow. But then she went on to run for city council. And she made it. But prior to that, uh, Barbara Jean Johnson was a, a member. So she asked me to be her campaign manager. So I did. Mm -hmm. And we were running. The first time we ran, I went to the union, CWA president running. Y'all got to back her up. And no, uh, she we, we We usually back the winners. Wow. I said, I, used, I thought you made the winners. Wow. <laughs> So I said, okay, that's okay. all right, that's, yeah. all right. that's cool. Y'all don't so. want to back your own person? Mm -hmm. So we ran, we made the cut. Now they come, ooh, ooh. ooh. That's how they no, normally no, do, no, yeah. No, 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 yeah. we don't need that. So we we ran, but we didn't make the, the, the final nine. So the next time we ran again, we made the cut again. But we make the final nine. But Jennifer Granholm became the governor, and she saw our campaign, and mm. she made her a gubernatorial appointment. So mm. she got a position in the in the governor's office through our efforts to that. So now Brenda comes to me and says, "Ooh, be my campaign man." I said, "No, this is too hard. <laughs> I'm not doing this again." I said, "But you know, it was five seats available, mm. and Brenda got the fifth seat." So now she's in and she's coming to me. I said, look, I'm tired. Uh, take my nephew, because I've groomed him. Mm. And he's, he now knows the union. And he, I've introduced him to all my union officials. That he can work with you, because right. he's on disability right now. So he, he volunteered, mm. worked with her. But then his daughter graduates from college. He introduced her to Brenda, and she becomes on Brenda's staff. Mm. <laughs> now, in fact, she was on the, the cadre that went to Kansas City to study the NFL draft to see how they did it. <laughs> and, uh, wow. Yeah. And so, you know, things are, are evolving as they should. Right. You know, in terms of, of all of those It's things. on divine time. Yeah. That and, is. And, 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 you know, yeah. we can... We Again, got many stories. This yeah. is the connection, why it's so important that as we were talking, you are stable, powerful force directly related to what I'm interested in is the contribution of rap and hip hop mm -hmm. to our people. But he's a conscious, stable force also Correct. in my hometown, Detroit. And as we talked about, I'm sure Detroit is the black capital of the world mm. and nothing can be done about it if we don't give it up. 
we are leading the rise of blackness. Mm-hmm. We are the, the, the what, is, what do you call it, the dark matter. Yes. It's coming. Uh, darkness we, is spreading. Darkness. Yeah, yeah you got to deal with the darkness. <laughs> yeah, are you darkness. afraid of the dark? Or are you afraid of the well, dark? Well, well, you mentioned earlier about the spirituality. Right? Yes. But you, the interesting thing is, this is the home, this has spurred three of the four black uh, religions. The Shrine of the Black Madonna. Yes. The, the, the Mosque. Uh, Nation number, of Islam. Nation of Islam. And... Uh, 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 the, the Hebrew Israelites that were here moved to Israel. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, now the, the fourth one was in Oberlin, uh, uh, Ohio. Mm-hmm. That's Mother Wisdom and her church. And uh, she just, she had died uh, not too long ago. She was 104. Wow. And Queen Mother Nefertiri Oshindara, mm-hmm. who was here in the was city. It? Yeah, I remember her. Yeah. yeah. She and I would go around to different things because she was in the Indians, Africans. She was in all, all the things, them, yeah. but she'd always come and get me to, to go help her. You know, mm-hmm. we would pour libations for the city council. We pour libations for the opening of the of the uh, fest of uh, the African American festival. American yeah. festival. Yep. And uh, so uh, she she would take me. Let's go to Oberlin because I got a mother wisdom, mm. mother wisdom. You know, and finally she died. Mm. And the church was going to be carried on by the, 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 the next vibrant uh, uh, minister, but he died. Oh, wow. And now they were in a turmoil. So they came, they told us, can y'all do something for us? And in fact, they gave us information to develop. Mm-hmm. And, 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 I, and the Queen Mother then died. And I said, I, I can't do this. Yeah, this is something dangerous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well. Every time somebody step up, they die. Nice. No, I just said it. But, but in Ghana, I, I preceded David to Ghana mm-hmm. because there's something that people have never heard of, and that is Fihankra. And what is Fihankra? I'm That's what I'm saying. Right. They've never heard of it. When it began, it was... Uh, uh, there was a Pan-African conference going on in, in Ghana mm-hmm. and the African Americans and everybody over there celebrating hmm. and a priest okay. got up and said why are you all smiling and laughing at each other they go, well, well. he said you know everybody that left here was not stolen you sold them people <laughs> so they said whoa <laughs> they reality said, check and when he said that a woman begin to mourn. Oh, wow. Now, you'd have to be over there. David knows how spiritual the people are, how childlike. Mm. They're saying, well, what should we do? Mm. So he says, you got to apologize, you got to give them a throne, mm. and you got to give them land. Mm. Welcome them back. Mm. So they did. They created Fihankra, which is an Andinkra symbol. Mm. The, the, the two of the Andinkra symbols are on here. That's Sankofa right. and Jinyami. Mm-hmm. This is the world, Africa, Sankofa, Jinyami. Gotcha. Two of the most popular Andinkra symbols over there. Mm-hmm. Sankofa is to go back and fetch your past. Yes, right. To learn to the future. Yeah. Yeah. Jinyami, going back to what David said to you about put the pudding, mm-hmm. Jinyami means accept God. Right. But most of the priests here, misinterpreted that word accept, not accept. Yes. <laughs> and they would put on their kente twelfths and saying, blah, blah, gin yummy, you know. I said, that's not what it means. It doesn't mean to accept God. It means you say the first thing and end it by accept God. For example, if a bomb fell on this place, everything would go except God. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wisdom. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The play on the words, this is the poetry part. Yeah, this is back to where we were at yeah. the end. <laughs> with, uh, wow. the, the pudding is in the eating. Right. Don't yeah. lose. Don't pay attention to these words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it, it's a little thing that we used to do when you go around a circle, you whisper a word, you right. whisper a word. Telephone. When you get back, yeah. it's like, I didn't say Telephone that. It's, not even it's the, another, another phrase. Yeah. You know, you've heard of this, it's uh, uh, to skin a cat. 
The, uh, more than one way. More, more than, than one, one way, way to skin, skin a cat. cat. Right. That's not what it said. And why would we want to skin a cat, a cat. anyway? Exactly. The, word, the, the saying was there's more than one way to skin a catfish. <laughs> because the skin on the catfish is hard to get off. Wow. And so they would have to scrape it. These, oh, no, I do it this way. And I, no, I do it this way. So there's, there's more than, than one way, way to skin, skin a catfish. catfish. And but so they you shorten it to, no, to but I can see you can shorten it to cat because they understood. Cat, the cat was a cat with fish. But now if you let it go through the, through the time and the person don't know you're talking, because that's the first time I understood. But oh, you, know, oh, okay. you know, if you don't know you're talking about a cat, it makes all the sense in the world. Wow. Yes. And see, that's why it's important, again, uh, keep to, build, it, to build, bridge the gaps. Yeah, like, exactly. wow. Like and, and collect the wisdom. Yes. You know, like I said, you know, my thing is, you can't take it with you. They're right. talking about money. Mm -hmm. But to me, it goes double for wisdom. So anytime somebody comes to me, I freely give it. It don't cost nothing. My class is free. It's been free for 50 years. Students come in, they mm -hmm. learn. My thing is, the, the teacher is like a river. Flows steady. Mm -hmm. But the students are like the animals. You got to come and drink. I ain't coming to you. Right. The flow is <laughs> here, though. Yeah, right. they say when the, stu when the teacher, the st when the student is ready, ready the to teacher will appear. appear. So, you know, I, I want to honor God and Cain because you said it's like a river. Cain had a saying, life ain't nothing but a river flowing through an empty hand. You can hold on if you want to, but Lord, when the shit <laughs> Life ain't nothing but a river mm. flowing through an empty hand. You can hold on if you want to, but Lord, when mm. the S H I T hits the fan, I don't, I don't want to overuse these right. precious words. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, you know, I, they call it profanity. They call it profanity. It is profane when you overuse it, mm. but when you use it in the appropriate situation. It's an enlightening word. I got a question about that with That's the profane. Right. Like, I was talking to this brother by the name of uh, Paradise Greg from X Clan, mm -hmm. and he broke something down to me. He said, when it comes to profanity, he said, the whole English language we speak is profane. Yeah, exactly. Like, by humbug. If you said by humbug in the 30s, that meant you and the dude was about to, you know, go to both. Y'all was about to, somebody had to go. Now, we've heard, who is it, Scrooge say, oh, Christmas, oh, my humbug. Yeah. I'm raised with that, right. you know and what I'm saying? Not, so the word don't even common. mean. It's common. It and becomes, that's what I'm saying about these words that we call profane. Right. That we over, the profanity is the overuse of words that could have power. Mm -hmm. You know, by humbug means it's a very, I, I never, like you said, it's, Commonplace, it don't really mean it loses all its meaning. No, but, but back then it had meaning. Yeah, that's exactly your point. But, and poets, in particular, that was something that we talk about all the time. That the last poets about these the preciousness of words, mm. you, you know, like an MF. I won't even use the term, an MF is a real precious word mm. because this describes a situation of great importance to us, mm. the raping and misuse of our mothers. Right. Because number one, the F word, it wasn't even in our vocabulary. It ain't got, what, what is that? But it, it implies some, love is not effing. Right. Uh, effing is another whole kind of- Energy, a whole nother- Intense kind of- It's kind of like we were saying, it's like more with the lust right. of observing the beauty. Right, 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 right. But so it that, also brings with it pain because you want to, I'm going to F right. you up. No, I'm going to F you I'm up. Right. That's what F means. I'm mm -hmm. going to F you up. Right. You mess with me, don't, don't F with me. Right. Don't F with me because I'm going to F you up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to bring more pain on you. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but, but we don't, we use the word so casually that we de like by Humburg. I, never, I heard the word, it was used casually. But you defamed the original meaning. Mm -hmm. and you took away, like you said, that was a important. It was a, ooh, ooh. You can't be saying by humbug, you talking about fighting. Right. Well, but that goes back to European culture. But that too, with they, the duels and slapping the man. Yeah, fighting is, is, is pistols. You know, 
Ten yeah, paces, I, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's and I, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, because we're all brothers and sisters on the planet, but we have to uh, recognize any tendencies that we have and not let more conflict grow out of the tendencies, if you will. Mm. You know, we we we've been accepting people, yes. and we got to get to the point where we mm. ain't accepting, mm. because then we enable then those serve it. who are going to take advantage of accepting people. You're right. You're and right. so, you know, we got to we got to look at ourselves again. I'm starting with the man in <laughs> the mirror. <laughs> That's That's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. I got a question. So. Yeah. Detroit, Detroit. How did y'all brothers come together? Like, with, with you said, we were just making the the the, um, the joke about Moses and Aaron, like having the king and the high priest, like the development of this. It wasn't a joke. I mean, I know. I, I was just saying, like, how did we come together? Yeah, like, how did that? Well, let's see. Uh, my mother had her first child and <laughs> named him David. Uh, they called it David. Mm-hmm. And then my mother had a second child, which was. Our, our beloved sister who's gone on and her name was Valeda and then my mother had her third child and named him Gerald and he took the name by him but so that's how we came together yeah <laughs> but it's different yeah. having siblings and because none of my siblings are conscious like that right it's very rare that you get two seeds coming from the same mother no we had four Wow. What one thing Ron Milner said, if the four of you brothers ever touched the earth at the same time, there would be a powerful quake. Quake, yeah. yeah exactly. And so one, we've lost a yogi. And, uh, and uh, Pi has the image we'll show later on, mm-hmm. the incredible Nelson family. And yeah, wow. the a, there was a, a, a article where, while, while I was my class had reached its pinnacle Mm -hmm. because we just had all types of media attention and everybody was hurting for this class. New Detroit had a program on the uh, east side and they called me and said, would you come and teach your class because we had a gang problem. Mm. I says, I'm not into re- rehabilitating gang members. I'm into keeping <laughs> people keep from going down that right. road. And so, but I went Preventative in. medicine. Yeah, yeah, I went anyway. And, and I was, while I was, I worked for AT&T. Okay. So while I was working there, uh, uh, I got a call. I was also president of the union. And I got a call and I said, yes. And they said, you know, this is the government. We've been watching you. And I said, oh, whoa. And I said, well, yeah, I, I know I'm squeaky clean. So they said, no, 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 not that. We've been watching your program. Oh, thank and you. And they said, we that. have 15. <laughs> the we have, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I thought, too. So he said, we got $15 million oh, in, yeah. in okay, grants. Keep talking. And they're going, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're go, it's going back because no one has claimed it. Oh, he wow. He says, but we examined your program and it's, it, it checks it all the boxes. He says, so we'll give you all or any part of it. Mm. So I said, wow. So I went back. They said, the only catch is uh, Mich- yeah, Michigan Bell must be the fiduciary. We're not going to hand you 15. Right, 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 right. I got you. So you're working with a major company. Gotcha. You're, you're rehabilitating youth. Mm. You're keeping them off drugs. You're giving them self-esteem. He said, you've checked all our boxes. Mm. So I went to, I had a connection at Michigan Bell. He says, I'll, I'll, I'll set up the meeting. He set up the meeting with the government and every, all the officials. And he came out of the meeting and said, I got a stack of papers on my desk telling me why I can't do it. <laughs> so I knew, I mean, I, you ain't gonna give you know, me no $15 million. I changed this city. Mm. You gave me $15 million. Right, changed so the world. They, they, they squelched that. So, you know, that's, that's just what, what, it, what it was at the time. Mm. So coming from that positive family, coming from that energy, that is... That's incredible. <laughs> they did, a, that, like I said, when the guy came to me, he says, I want to do another article about your class. Mm-hmm. I said, I, 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 I'm, in, I'm a union official too, and I'm in bargaining. I ain't got, I ain't got time, time for, for that. Yeah. I said, do, do my brother. So said, who's your brother? I said, David uh, Nelson. Mm-hmm. He started the last poet. That's your real brother? I said, yeah. I said, I'll do my other brother, Yogi, who invented veggie burgers. That's your real brother? 
I said, yeah. I do my grandfather. He was a United States Marshal in Oklahoma wow. in 1913. Wow. So they said, I'm going to do an article on your whole family. <laughs> and my baby brother, he, he happened to be a pastor in, in the CME church. Right. So these are the four brothers. Yeah, we always took brothers four pictures at any event. And, uh, and that's what they were talking with. Ron Miller was saying, if you four of you brothers ever got together and put your feet on the, the ground. Four the four horsemen yeah. of the apocalypse. It would turn the world man. Yeah. Yes. I'm see I'm seeing it now. <laughs> all this is coming full circle. Like <laughs> yeah, and all, all of the end, I mean this is this is the time that we're in. Mm. The time for the connections to be made. Yes. That need to be made and the time for the encouragement of flourishing and and time for us to Encourage one another. Yes. That's that's what it is. That and me again, I'm committed to reversing the aging process. I intend I'm I, I, I hope I was gonna sit in the rocking chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mind sitting in the rocking chair, but believe me, I ain't gonna stumble up out of it. I can get up. I heard that. <laughs> you know, so yes. I mean I, but rest at the appropriate time yes. and share at the appropriate time. And, uh, you know, I can depend on you yes. because you're an executive. Yes. You know, in my field, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're going to change the world. Yes. And Pi is gonna be a part of helping us with his his wisdom. We we're gonna we're gonna change the music industry. I am ready, and I'm I'm talking I'm to ready. you out there. If you got any consciousness about yourself, I just last September was the guest. At, and Blair was there with me. Mm -hmm. I was the guest at the Soul Awakening. I was the guest M MC, uh, Conscious Hip Hop Three Day Festival. Forty artists committed to Conscious Hip Hop, and so we're ready to push that movement on out into the world. I'm and, ready too, brother. And, and why? Yeah, and anybody who don't like it, why do we need to have Conscious Hip Hop? How come Hip Hop? squelch mm -hmm. kicking kicking knowledge. How come conscious hip hop failed to acknowledge uh, the roots? Mm -hmm. You just kind of casually mention us in the past. Right. You know, well, the, they just had the 50th anniversary of hip hop and the last poets were not even mentioned in the band name. Mm. So, so how can you yeah, how is, can you is. have a 50th anniversary and you no don't need to acknowledge to the, you don't acknowledge the triple OG. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, but we, we, we got we work go, to do. We, we go, still got we work go, to no, do. No, well, we're going to do it. We, we're already doing it. It's hap and all we got to do is let it happen through us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, all right. When, when the vibration comes, let it flow. All right. Like we did today. Thank you, uh -huh. brothers. Well, thank y'all once again. Thank you, brother. Payamba. Thank you, brother. Hey. This is what it's all about. <laughs> These brothers, hey, I'm rolling with the four horsemen. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. We coming at y'all. Y'all getting ready to see something. I ain't even going to tell y'all what it is because I don't even know what it is. But I see it and I feel it and I know it. It's getting ready to happen. So we will definitely build, brothers. Let's demonstrate. Let's bridge this gap. The solidarity is important. And let's get out here and make this happen, man. Let's wake these people up because... They ain't gonna get us this time. They got us last time. They got us with the ship, you know. We, but now the brothers is here. So I've been warned. Double check. Now I can triple check. Being an executive for the future generations. These brothers, myself, and it was brothers before them, and brothers and sisters before them, and so this is what we doing. It's solidarity here at the Morris Mud Show. Peace and love, y'all.